Okay, so this is your uh, redistricting web page, and it's wonderful. Your staff has done a, a great job. So you have that big button that says submit a draft map online now. And if you click on that, um, it's going to take you directly to the Districtor tool. Uh, Districtor is an online mapping software out of Tufts University. And there are a lot of other jurisdictions who are utilizing their tool for their redistricting. So again, it's really important to uh, use this specific page. There's a couple of sections at that top section. It gives you just some information on the tool. Uh, you have um, two ways that you can draw maps, either using the community of interest drawing tool, or you can do it by districts. There's also the public gallery section, and you have four maps that have been submitted so far. Uh, so it gives you the date of when the maps were submitted, the name, and the names come directly from the author, and we'll show you when we get into the tool how you save it. Uh, but also every map will get a unique ID number, and that's how we reference the um, ID number for draft plan C, and that was ID number 101-628. Um, you also have a section, if you scroll down a little bit more, called Works in Progress. And um, you can click that button, load drafts. I don't know if there's any draft plans. So there is. Um, so these are plans that members of the public have not submitted um, in their final form. They have them here as drafts that they are still working on. And then the final section, if you scroll down a little bit more, it tells you a little more about the data that is in the, uh, the mapping platform. So we work directly with Districtor to ensure that you have uh, for your specific tool, the city layers of it and the correct data that we have to use in California. So we'll scroll back up. And um, would you like me to go through both the community of interest drawing tool or just the district-based tool? Uh, go ahead and do the district-based tool. I think we've already okay. gone over the communities of interest. Okay, wonderful. So we'll click on the purple button and it says Santa Rosa, seven city council districts built out of census blocks. And so uh, the community of interest tool and the district-based tool do look really similar. There are some notable differences. Uh, just from the imagery, you have a grayed out background instead of the street layer, but you still have the city limits and then also um, on the left of the image, uh, you might be asking, what are those gray sections? And those are the census blocks. Um, so again, for redistricting, we have to use the decennial census file. And when we're talking about data, we're also synonymously talking about that census geography, which will be your census box. On the top left-hand corner, you have a plus and minus button, which will allow you to zoom in and zoom out of the map. And then that button on the bottom will orient your map uh, pointing north. And so those are uh, just the, the small stuff that you have on the left side. But on the right side of your screen is the bulk of your the work that you're gonna be doing. Um, so you can see that the hand button or the pan tool has already been clicked on. So that allows you to move the map around and to also zoom in and zoom out of the map. So that will automatically be the button that you are on as you um, open your tool. The button to the direct right of it is the brush stroke tool. And uh, if we click on that, um, we'll see here, and again, there is a difference here from the community of interest tool. You will only be able to draw a specific number of districts uh, for the district-based tool. You can, you can submit a plan that only has one district or um, less than seven, but you can only draw seven districts. So that is a difference from the community tool. You do have the ability to change your, your brush stroke size, which is that, um, that toggle button. Um, right under the, the blue color uh, that says brush size. And if you can move that to the right, you're gonna be able to grab a large portion of census blocks. Or if you toggle that to the left, you can do one by one or have a smaller amount of census blocks that you'll draw. Um, you also have the ability uh, to lock already drawn districts. Um, so if you have that's that space right there. Um, so if you have uh, districts that you've drawn and you are really happy with how it looks, then you won't be able to make those changes. 
The final two buttons, and we'll come back to the express stroke size, is the erase tool directly to the right up at the top. Um, this here is, is similar to the community of interest tool, so it allows you to erase. And like the brush stroke tool, you can make it a huge eraser or um, do one by one. And the final button on the right, and then we'll get back to the, um, the brush stroke tool, is your, um, your uh, search tool. So if you, if you zoom in a little bit on your map, uh, it will allow you to have information by census block. So it'll give you the total count of the census block, the ethnic breakdown for that inspection tool. Um, so those are all the buttons that you have, but if we can go back and click on the that brush stroke tool and you can pick a color now, um, if you wanna start drawing a district. So just click any area of your map and start clicking away. So you can create a district by uh, moving your map and clicking uh, one by one, or if you click an area and then drag your, um, your tool, then you'll be able to pick up a large portion. You're gonna see simultaneously what's happening on the right side of your screen is there's gonna be a bar that is moving to the right. This is gonna give you in real time the amount of um, total count that you have in a particular district. If you wanna change the color, then you go back to the, just go back to the brush stroke. You have a, a really wonderful staff member who is, is familiar with district or it's great. You can click on another color and then you can go ahead um, and draw another district. So if you don't have that block already drawn districts, uh, you can go, you can move your uh, yellow district into the blue one. So if we wanna take up portions, uh, so we're able to do that. But again, if you're really happy with what your district looked like, you're gonna to wanna to click on that lock already drawn districts button. Some of the other numbers that are um, important here is if we go to the bottom right of the screen, we see the ideal. So that is if you had districts of exactly perfect size, the ideal size of a district would be 25,502.14 people. Um, so that uh, that's also what the line represents in that middle of that box. Um, so we can see that we have the blue district and the yellow district are above the ideal population. And it also gives us the unassigned population. So if a member of the public is interested in submitting a full district plan, you're gonna wanna try to get that as close to zero. There is something called um, highlight unassigned units at that bottom left. And if you click on that, it's gonna highlight all of the areas that are not currently in a district. And you can click that off if, as you're going your plan. It also gives you the max population deviation. So as I noted, it doesn't give you the total population deviation, but it, it will give you the max deviation of your district. So currently um, the 80.5 is representing your yellow district. So we do have a lot of members of the public um, who do do their deviation that's under 10%. Uh, but again, if the council would like, we can take the public submissions down, put them in our internal software, and then have an atlas produced for you. Um, so um, yeah, you can continue to make, uh, make a district. And again, this is just a demo, myself and the staff member who's uh, using this tool. This is not a plan that we're submitting. This is purely for example purposes. Uh, so we can go to the, the tab that says data layers, which is right to the right of that population. Um, and there's a, we can see right now we have the thing clicked on called show painted districts. So that allows us to see the districts that we just drew. Um, if you'd like, you can also click on the one directly beneath that called show numbering for painted districts. Um, if you wanna number your districts, you also have boundaries for your current district. So if you'd like to kind of see where you are in reference to your current boundaries, you can click on that and they will appear. And again, you can click on and off on, on all of these. And then the final one, if you click on population by race, you will have some more information that shows up. So you can click on show population and then go to variable um, to the right of where it says variable. I'll go up a little bit to the top. Um, under show population, 
there is a tab directly, yes. And here, if you click on any one of those, it's gonna show you the total population of uh, just your area or by a specific um, ethnic group. Again, if we are creating a district based on race, that would be under come from your legal counsel to direct us to do so. Uh, but if we were directed to do so, we would be utilizing the citizen voting age population data set. So we can click off the show population and then we'll go to the bottom and click show citizen voting age population. Um, and this also gives us that the CVAP. So it's really similar to what we just did, but now we can look at the total CVAP and we have a couple of different groups and, and areas than we do on our uh, specific data tables. The final tab is the evaluation tab, which if we go back up to where it says data layers, and if we click on evaluation tab, we can click on population by race. And this will show us a comparison of your districts based on different groups. So here for compare, um, you can change that to, um, again, we have a tab to white population, Hispanic, Asian, Black, Asian American, Islander, and Native Hawaiian. And you can compare those different groups uh, per district. It'll give you the percentage in the table below. Uh, similar to your tab for data layers, it also gives you this, the same amount of information for your citizen voting age population by race as well. So those are all the tabs. And uh, the um, if we go up to the top above the colors where it says save, so we're gonna click on that button. So once you're done or you're done with your session and you wanna save it as a draft, we'll click on that blue button. We won't be adding it to our district or uh, page right now, but we'll go ahead and click on that save button and up will pop a window. So here is where you will save your map. And when you do save it uh, on the bottom where it says share to gallery, we won't be clicking that now again, cause it's a demo, uh, but you can click on that and it will automatically appear in the homepage that we viewed at the beginning of this demo. Above where it says share to gallery, there's that box that allows you to add a, oh, a, just right above share to gallery, right there. Uh, that's the space where you can name your map. So it gives you the ability to name it. If you realized uh, another difference between the districtor tool and the community of interest tool is that you don't have the ability on the map to add any additional text. Uh, so if a member of the public would like to give additional information on their map that they submitted, we urge you to send an email to attend one of these meetings um, to uplift your map and let us know the basis behind your plan. But again, you do have that ability to name it. If you don't wanna share it directly to the gallery, you can click on um, right below share now, you can click on work in progress and we'll click on that. And now the button on the bottom says save as draft. So now you can save it as a draft directly to the gallery. You do have an ability up at the top of this window where it says copy to clipboard. Um, so you can copy your specific URL to your map on, um, on the web and be able to look at it there. Uh, but again, the best way to ensure that the council and the public can view the map that you have worked so hard on uh, to review is to share it directly to the gallery. And we'll exit out of this window and we have one last button and then we'll be, we'll be done. Um, at the very top right, there's three um, lines. And if we click on that, you also have the ability to print your map as a PDF or if you have um, another mapping software that you would like to look at this plan in, you can download it as a CSV, a GeoJSON, or a shapefile, and then you can add it to your software, such as Maptitude or Esri, to look at it more in detail in that way. Um, and that's that's all the, the buttons and functionality for Districtor. It is a pretty user-friendly tool. And again, we already have four plans and uh, we're still accepting them for the council to look at. And that's the, the district or demo.